on the last cross gen run you guys seem to really enjoy mega charizard x so grab yourself a soda pop because we're going to be running it back now today i'm not here to debate if a notoriously strong legendary actually needs a mega evolution but the mad lads at game freak they did it anyway and whether you like it or not mega mewtwo y is a thing that exists and i was initially hesitant to do this one because in my opinion generation one mewtwo it's the single strongest iteration of a pokemon to ever exist and i'll go into that a little more later but first it's the very first tutorial battle where my doubts kind of crept in i'm going to crit here and that's going to be by design because mega mewtwo y only has confusion and there's going to be several key spots early in the game where confusion alone just isn't enough and i didn't mind resetting here until I got the crit because it takes like 10 seconds and you can see at the top left there uh, my crit rate is tw over 27% so it just wasn't that bad now two things first you might wonder why I would fish for a crit here I guess I've already kind of answered that it only takes like 10 seconds and I didn't mind I usually don't mind fishing for a little bit of luck because it doesn't take that much time and I really wanted to unleash like the full potential of a run here now let's get back to vanilla Mewtwo the huge difference between these two Pokemon is how they start Mewtwo has 150 four base special but it starts off with psychic this allows it to have an absurdly strong early game to where you can just mow down each and every pokemon in your path for the longest time but let's finally get you up to speed with what mega mewtwo y has going on under the hood now honestly what can you really say about these stats take a good look here it's kind of silly and i promise you that your eyes are not deceiving you i did not make a typo because that's 194 base special and if that wasn't good enough on its own just you toss in 140 speed or 150 base attack for good measure just because now needless to say this thing is on another level in terms of stats for moves i went with the generation 9 base set and we've already talked about confusion that's all we start with pretty much and we'll go over the new moves added soon but for now i'll go ahead and tell you guys that moves like aura sphere or psi strike they just see no use Sidestrike I added in just because if you're a channel member or a Patreon, I do give access to the patch file. You might want to actually use it, but there's no world where I'm actually going to get to level 72 today. Ancient Power is pretty cool with the Omni Boost chance, but it's pretty irrelevant. And Psycho Cut, we will come back. To, we'll be hearing a lot about Psycho Cut more soon, but you can kind of see the yin and the yang between the two Mewtwo's here. The question going into this run was if 154 base special with Psychic is actually better than 194 special but only having confusion and it turns out that the extra 40 base power of Psychic does edge out the extra 40 special so I was initially really skeptical of this run kind of lagging behind early but there's really nothing left in the early game bare minimum we can just go straight to Brock. Coming here at minimum battles isn't great for a Pokemon of this caliber. Even if you crit the Geodude, a three shot is, is still going to be likely. And the same goes for Onix. So you're going to spend like six total turns here. It's not incredibly fast. And something I didn't touch on is that you only have 70 base defense. Not really that good. They actually It's actually lower than base Mewtwo. So it does have some sort of trade off. But what this means is that Geodude and Tackles are going to add up. Especially if it gets a cheeky little crit like it does here. But now let me say segue into what made this run really intriguing to play for me and this is one of those like when life gives you lemons type of situations here now you see i actually want to take a lot of damage here i want to utilize a mechanic that i normally don't talk about we'll get to that very soon but i do get through this one and it's a pretty good time Now let's talk about red bar and why it's so important to official any percent speed runs. Now when you get to red health, there is a low health alarm sound and we all we all know it, we probably hate it. And to keep this kind of as short and simplistic as possible, that low health alarm, it kind of overrides the Pokemon cries whether they're entering battle or dying. And it lets you make inputs a little bit sooner than you would normally be able to. Now it's not a huge time save on its own, but if you do a ton of battles in red bar, you stay in it for most of the game it does start to really add up and that was my goal for this run now you can see me here on the very first bug catcher of route three i'm gonna bait out a tackle i'm intentionally not gonna kill this caterpie and that's gonna put me into red bar and from there it's pretty much off to the races with each pokemon that i encounter from here on out shaving little increments off of the run red bar is a strategy that i intentionally never did before because i think it would give certain pokemon a too much of an advantage but after doing a lot of attempts here i can see 
say that uh, I have an open mind and my opinions have changed, which is you know something good for everybody to do. Always keep an open mind, guys. Now, while the upside here is that you can pull off a really fast run, it does make the run incredibly risky throughout, where even maybe trivial battles can essentially just ruin the run. I think the fact that very few Pokemon could pull off such a strategy and the inherent risk involved, it just makes it a perfectly fine tactic to try, and what better way to push the game to its absolute limits than a cross-gen run with a Pokemon like this. Now, to go back to routing, you already saw that I went straight to Brock at minimum battles, and in Mount Moon, I'm not gonna pick up any extra battles either. I even bought an escape rope earlier so that I could skip the candy here just to make things that much faster, and this is a lot different in the other routes that I started with. Now, originally, I was doing the Light Years Junior Trainer before Brock, I was picking up a few extra extra battles in Mount Moon, and I was using a rare candy at the end to hit a really early power spike for Psycho Cut, and it just, it wasn't the play. I often get caught up in the numbers, I'll look at it and I'll say, hey, if I get an extra level here, I can start to one-shot everything, and it feels really good, really smooth, but the reality is that it's just a, it's just a slower route. I know that doesn't matter for some of you, but it's very interesting to me, but now that I keep track of things like split data and stuff, I can just see that it wasn't worth it. After Mount Moon, I'm gonna give a big spoiler here for the run, I'm gonna heal in Cerulean, and this is going to be the one singular time that I'm going to voluntarily heal in the entire run. And that even includes the Elite Four. It does mean that we're going to lose Red Bar and that's pretty sad, but I have to anchor myself here. We all know there's a couple of time skips. Bill's House, the warp back to Cerulean, and then when you get down to Vermilion, the Pokemon Fan Club, it just saves a lot of time. It's too important to skip, but there is kind of like an underlying actual benefit to being underleveled and not having more powerful moves when we look at rival number two. Now Pidgeotto is going to be a two to three shot. Sand attacks aren't the best, but remember we have 150 base attack and we have Swift. So sand attacks really don't matter. But here it just goes for two straight quick attacks. It takes off about half of my health. And remember, this is a good thing in this run. Now I easily roll through the rest of the fight, but notice that I'm using Swift. I'm letting the Rattata get some damage off on me. We get a Hyper Fang into a quick attack and we get to Red Bar once again. And Squirtle, he chips us a little bit more so that when we level up, we don't get into the yellow health. After the battle, there's no secret here, Nugget Bridge, it contains the single highest cluster of mandatory battles in the game, and Mewtwo is the most equipped Pokemon ever to take advantage of it. Just to throw out some numbers here, Confusion is a guaranteed one shot on each and every single thing on this entire route. Now a few battles into Nugget Bridge, I'm going to hit level 16, which is going to take me out of Red Bar temporarily, don't worry about that, but the significance here is Psycho Cut. This is the psychic version of Slash, just to make things as plain as possible, that means we're going to be critting the eye balls out of every Pokemon from here on out. Now remember on the overlay crit damage is calculated in the move power specifically for these high crit moves and you can see that Psycho Cut is absurdly strong and in my opinion this is where Mega Mewtwo Y starts to kind of leave vanilla Mewtwo in the dust. Now if you're wondering about Red Bar, I just hit Yellow Bar. Strategic places like this little Mankey here, it's a great place just to waste a turn and take a little bit of damage without wasting basically no time. Let's go to Misty, and this is where I have to highlight how risky Red Bar can be as a strat. And watch, it's not worth it for the majority of the Pokemon. I only have 11 health, which means that even the weakest of hits can be risky, but in this case, Psycho Cut and its nasty 187 effective power can nuke the Staryu, and like always, it's Starmie, that's the danger. In the best case scenario, I can get two high roll crits, and I can two-shot it, but here I don't. And a single tackle takes me down to a mere three hit points, which means the run's pretty much over, but Misty uses as an X-Defend, and that means I don't have to reset the run, but it was close. Continuing on, we can take a look at what I think was the worst battle in the run. Now, I've been over Red Bar, we've talked about it already, it's risky, but a full disclosure is that it's honestly not an easy strategy to play. It's, it can be quite frustrating, and it took me starting this run quite a few times before I got the one that I wanted. Not counting fishing for the crit early in the rival battle, I would say I started about a dozen runs and failed a dozen runs before I got what I considered to be the perfect run, the one we're watching now, but the Triple Pidgey Junior Trainer was the worst of the bunch. There's three quick attack users back to back to back and when you're just teetering on the edge of death in the pursuit of just trying to destroy Pokemon Red, resets are decently likely here because there's really nothing you can do if there's a quick attack going on. In this footage you actually see me tank a quick attack and I live at just one health, but out of all the runs that I attempted, the run ended right here about six or so of those times. But it's really not as bad as you might think. I do play on times three speed and if you look at the game clock, this averages out to about nine minutes of real time, so it's really not a huge time sink. It's not going to make you pull your hair out, 
but I'd be kind of dumb not to highlight this battle for you guys because it caused me a lot of trouble. Down on the SSN, I actually pick up Body Slam. This is specifically for opposing Psychic types. I'll go into more of this later, but it is enough to get the job done wherever I need it, and I'm going to learn it immediately. Remember that Mega Mewtwo Y has 150 base attack, and the only other thing to note here is that just like the rest of the run, I'm trimming out the fat, I'm skipping the candy, and when it comes to rival number three, there are some potential quick attack run resets here, but thankfully the game sort of, it starts to back off on those from here on out. But there are a couple right here, Pikachu on the search fight has one, so it's a possibility. I would also like to talk about Psycho Cut one more time and say that it's almost hard to fathom how much damage a 190 effective power move with 194 base special does at this point in the game. I think if you wasn't being as sweaty as I'm being with Red Bar and you were just playing more casually, I'd go as far as to say this run is impossible to lose, but like I said earlier, for me, this is where most of the challenge lied in the run. The start of the game to around this little section around Surge, it's just difficult because your overall health pool is so low, it's harder to control Red Bar, and there's just so many quick attacks just hanging around that can just end the run. But let's take a, a quick little peek at split data for the run. You can see that skipping all the training for Brock it netted me just a little bit of a lead and before Misty is where we started to utilize Red Bar. Do remember that Mega Mewtwo Y is actually a little bit weaker than regular Mewtwo, Vanilla Mewtwo I should say, because it has Psychic and you don't get that power spike with Cycle Cut into a few battles into Nugget Bridge. So I'm already starting to compile a two and a half minute early lead despite that. Now if you want to know the significance of that, how good it is, a run like Mega Charizard X that, now keep this in mind, it's the second fastest run that I've ever done. It only had about a minute lead here, and I'd go as far to say that Mega Mewtwo Y, it's just getting warmed up. So from this point, I think if you're like me and you go full try hard, you risk it all to this point, the run really relaxes a lot for the next little bit. So the pace is gonna pick up just a little bit, but first, let me say that Mewtwo does suffer from the too many move syndrome. So Thunderbolt is something that I'm gonna hold off on. In Pokemon Red specifically, it only helps out on the slow pokes and rock tunnel. But look at this right here. Psycho Cut, it's so disgustingly strong, it can just one shot another psychic type even though it resists it. From there, I immediately head to the Celadon Mart. No vitamins, no extra purchases are needed. The only thing I do here is uh, trade a fresh water for Ice Beam. I learn it immediately. And this move is important because it covers the same niche as Thunderbolt with flying types. But more importantly, it can guarantee one shots on Execute and Executor, which is probably going to be the most problematic Pokemon for the run. And here you're going to see me mow down the Execute beauty in front of Erica. And when we get to Erica herself, it's just a matter of three cycle cuts. Now here you're going to see me use weaker moves on the Tangela because once again, I just, I know it's weak little spaghetti body could never knock me out. And this just serves the purpose of keeping me in red bar until the unskippable free heal in Pokemon Tower. Entering Erica, I was in a range where if I leveled up just once, I'd be in yellow bar. And I really enjoyed this little mini challenge to stay in red bar in this run as long as I could. So this one's over with. And there's also no need to really dive into Rocket Hideout today. Pretty easy, so we can just watch this little sped up footage of, of me on the warp puzzles. In Pokemon Tower, I'm going to easily cut down Rival 4 and the Ghastlies, but there's two things going on during this part of the game. The first is that I'm about to hit level 32, so I'm going to learn Amnesia. And I think I only used this move for maybe three battles in the entire run, but it solves a lot of the problems that the original Mewtwo has. And that would be the fact that it sort of slowly runs out of steam towards the end of the game with the slow level up group. The second thing is that mandatory heal that I just brought up a minute ago. This will take us out of red bar and thinking about how to get back into red bar, it put me in like a different frame of mind and I don't wanna just keep repeating myself but it made it really interesting to play, really fun. The answer to this problem was to go to Sylph after going to the Safari Zone. Now, a couple of things to note here that I want to go back to is that Mega Mewtwo Y actually has some upgrades to its TM learn set that I really wish Vanilla Mewtwo had. It gets access to Earthquake, and it's one of my only knocks on the Gen 1 run of Mewtwo because the increased damage, it would really help out against enemy psychic types around this part of the game. Now, I tried Earthquake out today, and I'm just not going to use it. Once again, 150 base attack. You really don't need it. The other benefit of not using Earthquake it means that I don't even have to go to the 10th floor. I can just skip that rare candy and all that extra fluff. So there's nothing extra here. We can go straight into rival number five. Sylph also has a couple of more benefits here. I can just be a lowly level 32. I can set up amnesia and still be perfectly fine. 
I can waste some turns. And being under leveled and not being able to one shot everything, it means that I can get hit. And once again, let's go over it one more time. Being hit is good for this run. I can get closer to that hive being in the red bar once again. I can get one more hit. And doing all the battles here also means that I can get some extra levels because in my opinion, the enemy psychic types like in Koga's gym, they're just something that can slow you down. And it just made all everything feel smoother to me, I guess. So just to kind of wrap up this battle, I take as much damage as the rival's willing to give to me and I finish this fight about half health. The second Giovanni is where I actually get the rest of the hits to take me into red bar. I let the Rawhorn hit me and then the Nidal Queen hit me at the end it puts me right where I need to be. After the battle, this is where I decide to use all of my rare candies I picked up to this point. Now there's only four of them, and there's really no great spots to use them without picking up extra battles. Now you can see here I'm at 1200 experience to the next level, and as somebody who's played this a lot and thinks about the game in a certain way, it really hurts me to have to like inefficiently use candies, but I have to remind myself this Pokemon's really good, and who cares if you're not as efficient with the rare candies as you should be, picking up the extra battle would just cost you more time. So in most runs, when you finish up Sylph, you're going to want to wrap up Saffron as a whole and go to Sabrina. It's a lot of S's. And my gut does tell me that that's faster, but it's really not. Now, if you look at the numbers, the split data, and you think about this, I have the flight path. It's going to take me the same amount of time to get to Sabrina now as it would later. It really doesn't matter. So let's kind of quickly keep blitzing through the game before I get to that dreaded Psychic Mirror matchup. Now let's talk about Koga's Psychic Gym Trainers. I like to be this level to guarantee one shots, but an unforeseen side effect of the rare candies means that I'm in yellow bar right now. And this, you already know about this run, it's red bar or bust, so I sort of stall a little bit here. I want to get back into red bar, and I want to take even some extra hits to make sure I don't get into yellow bar after I level up. And you might look at this and you say, hey, you're just wasting time. But you gotta trust me, being in red bar will make up for itself, and you just have to take my word for it. Look at the end of the run when we make it there, you tell me if it was worth it or not. From there, I easily mow down Koga's weak to psychic team, and after taking that brisk swim down to Cinnabar to have that introspective look on if Tombstoner brother is actually the 28th TM or not, we can take a look at Blaine. Now the strat here might be surprising, but it's a bunch of psycho cuts with nothing really to worry about at the end. Now, you have to get a pretty decently high roll on the crit to one shot Arcanine, and I don't get it. But Blaine, being Blaine, it means he just uses a super potion and he goes down like the dog that he is. Finally, we can pick up Sabrina, and who would have thought that 150 base attack with Body Slam is a good combination to breeze past her. Now the only single strategical moment in this fight is that I intentionally let the Venomoth live a turn to get a leech life off and that's the sweet spot baby it's gonna keep me in red bar for even longer and that's seven badges down it's on to giovanni this battle comes down to one thing the word of the day is ice beam i can just one shot everything no amnesia required and i really want to save psycho cut pp for other things now i'm going to be solely relying on elixirs for this run so utilizing a wider variety of moves just helps smooth things over after the battle is where I used the two final candies I picked up in Pokemon Mansion. And the hit from Venomoth earlier, it ensures that I'm still in red bar even after that. And the last obstacle before the Elite Four is rival number six. The battle itself is straightforward. There's no setting up. I have ranges with various moves on every single Pokemon, but this battle actually made me very nervous for one specific reason. You can see I start off at 31 health, and I'll get into this more in a second, but I was really afraid that as I leveled up in the Elite Four, I would lose Red Bar, and it would just be too difficult and too risky to get back into, so I made a decision here on the fly. The idea is that Blastoise will survive a hit. Now, if I don't set up any Amnesias, I can't one-shot it. Maybe it'll go for like Water Gun or something like that. It would do just enough damage to do exactly what I wanted it to do, and I could just ride Red Bar into the end of the game. Now what happens here is it goes for bot. It takes me down to 4 HP. Now I do win the battle pretty easily, and there's no way I'm going to be losing Red Bar at only 8 HP after I level up, but here, my friends, I had a decision to make. If I truly want to push Pokemon Red as far as it could ever go outside of a tool assisted speed run, I'm going to need to skip healing before the Elite Four and not lose Red Bar for the rest of the game. The problem is that virtually anything can take me out at this health, and like I said earlier, I had tried and failed this run at various points, like the Triple Pidgey Junior Trainer, like a dozen times. And to be this far into the run and take a risk like this was pretty scary because I was about to wait 
waste a lot of my time if this didn't happen. Now, as far as the game goes, nothing is really going to change outside of I, I learned Thunderbolt over Body Slam. I'm going to use an Elixir. I don't even know if I use an Elixir here. Doesn't matter. But let's quickly glance at Split Data one more time. You can see that Mega Mewtwo Y has been masterful to this point in comparison to the incredibly high bar already set by Vanilla Mewtwo. With this route, with this Pokemon, we're doing things that we may never see again. Now you might see the red split at Koga and wonder why it's behind. That's because I did Sylph first, so Koga was delayed a little bit behind Mewtwo's route. But you can see I've just been steadily building that lead bigger and bigger, culminating in a nine and a half minute lead when I enter Lorelai's room. But remember, I'm really low on health. I'm playing risky. I want you guys just to know that in the moment how nervous I was here. But let's just, let's take a look. Here's what the entire run came down to. I really wanted to see a growl here to survive. The Poke God shined down upon me, and I get a takedown miss, which is perfect. But there's something funny here. You can nervously see me spamming Ice Beam. Now, luckily, I was out of Ice Beams because I probably would have just shed a tear if I accidentally used Ice Beam and didn't knock out the Dugong, and I got knocked out and it ruined the entire run. Now, this lets me do a pretty clean Thunderbolt sweep on everything but the Jinx. What this means is that I feel really comfortable setting up on Slowbro. Water Gun is its only damaging move. I have really absurd speed special with the amnesia so setting up to plus four was a no-brainer here from this point I have the damage I can just kind of wrap this one up with a few more thunderbolts and the crisis is averted for now Hacker Anthony, Bruno, whatever you want to call him, it's a simple matter of just holding down the A button on Cycle Cut. No thought needed. We usually rag on Bruno, but today, the same thing applies to Agatha. Now, Cycle Cut is a ludicrously powerful move, but when it's super effective against every member of your team, you already know how it's going to go. And you can kind of see why I would even dare to do red bar strats this late into the game, because the battles aren't that bad outside of if you fumble the bag a little bit like I did and was a little bit too low in health. From there, I pop in a Elixir and Lance is, surprise surprise, an easy battle. You just Thunderbolt that Gyarados and you Ice Beam the rest. But here there was some little strategic nuances here. I had to control my Ice Beam usage to this point. I pretty much wanted to end this battle with at least maybe four, five, six Ice Beams left because it's really helpful for the champion. But I am down to the final battle. Let's see how Mewtwo closes it all out. This is the one battle that I need Amnesia the most. I'm gonna need that max setup plus six. But once again, just like on Lorelai, it's pretty risky on Pidgeot. So I just kinda, I play this one by ear. I think I play it wrong, I'll come back to that in a second. I set up one Amnesia, it uses Mirror Move, uses Amnesia itself. And on the second setup, it just starts to charge up a Sky Attack. So that's my cue just to move on, take it out. And Alakazam to me would be the spot where you should set up on. I shouldn't even have risked it on the Pidgeot, but it worked out, it's all good. I just don't think there's any point in risking risking the physical damage from like a wing attack or something like that. It definitely would have knocked me out. But just setting up here, Alakazam can do hardly any damage to you. But what I want you to look at here is that I'm fully set up and I got a very disgusting 999 special. And brother, I think you know what that means from this point. Now I mentioned having Ice Beam earlier and that's because from this point on in the fight, you can just hold down the button on Ice Beam. You can make it through Alakazam, Rhydon, Arcanine, Executor. You can make it through all these Pokemon without having to do a single extra input and once the dust clears and that Blastoise comes out he doesn't stand the chance against the Thunderbolt and Mewtwo it writes an exclamation point on this extraordinary run. Mewtwo finishes the game with an in-game time of 1 hour, 43 minutes, and 16 seconds. And this is a pretty special run to me because as you may know, I really pay attention to the speed runs and I really want to emulate those strats. And I've been wondering for quite a long time if it was possible to reach times like the current world record, 144XX. I don't remember exactly what it is off the top of my head. But could I reach those times with my rule set? And Mega Mewtwo I just hurdled it with ease. Now it goes to the saying that this is the emphatic I'm very comfortable in saying this the emphatic best Pokemon that I've ever played and I was really wrong about the modern set for Mewtwo not being as good as the Gen 1 Mewtwo set now it might start off a little bit weaker but by the time you hit Psycho Cut and eventually you hit Amnesia it really starts to pull ahead now it was just really cool to see a Pokemon finish at this low of a level just for reference if you don't watch a lot
lot of videos. The lowest level I've ever beat a vanilla run at was level 56, and this was a very easy four levels lower. Now as for Mega Evolutions, they currently sit at number one and number three on the cross-gen tier list, so there might be an argument to be had that they don't belong on this list because they're too powerful and they just kind of disrupt the balance because any Mega is going to be better than anything else. I'm not saying I believe that, but I'm saying that the data could tell us that factually, and I would really like to know what you guys think about that sentiment, but for now, I think they're just going to stay here. Maybe later in the future, we'll reevaluate that. The last thing I'll say is that I, I did Red Bar mainly because even in regular routing, I was already beating a Lola Ninetales top time, and I had a lot of fun with it, so I just really wanted to start pushing it and seeing just how far I could go, and I'm pretty sure this is my personal limit for a Gen 1 game, so take in the greatness right now because I'm pretty sure this is as good as it's ever gonna get. Special shout out to my channel members and Patreons. If you want to play the patch file, it is available to members. Uh, look in the member section of the community tab or go to my Patreon page. And if you made it this far, you're a real one. I do appreciate the support. Uh, this was the first voiceover that I recorded since I had my baby a little bit ago. Everything else was kind of halfway taken care of as I slowly release content, but it's pretty hard. I'm gonna tell you that now. I don't know how many. Drop me down a comment below. I know you guys are very supportive. Some of you guys have kids and you give me some encouraging words but if you know you know if you're a parent out there you know how tough it is so just doing this as a side hobby we made it this is the first video not gonna be the last i don't want to ramble but i'll catch you guys in the next one bye